Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Stigma Free Society live Facebook event. My name is Jerry Friesen, also known as a recovering farmer. Uh, I am what I sometimes call myself as a, a conflict and stress management specialist working out of Manitoba. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be able to do some interviews for the Stigma Free Society. Through this Facebook Live event, I am representing the Stigma Free Society, which is a Canadian registered charity that aims to reduce stigma of all kinds with a focus on mental health. This event is part of their Rural Mental Wellness Toolkit, an online community-based mental health program that creates access to mental health education and peer support training as well as practical and relatable resources for those living in rural and agricultural communities. You can find the toolkit at ruralmentalwellness.com, and I'll give you that again at the end of the show. It's a great pleasure for me today to introduce you to Tracy Brunette. Uh, I've known Tracy now for probably about three years. Um, she's going to tell us what kind of work she does Um but uh, like I said, I've known her, I think it's about three years ago that we met, and I've been able to be part of the show she puts on, but we're looking forward to hearing about that. Tracy is CEO of Farm Marketer and the host of Impact Farming, a video and audio show dedicated to helping Canadian farmers excel in the business of farming. In each episode, Tracy chats with today's most successful farm advisors and industry leaders to bring our audience or her audience the best and most important ideas. Tracy and her husband also are cattle ranchers in southeast Manitoba. As host of the show, primary producer and advocate, Tracy is passionate about helping farmers succeed in the business of farming. Welcome, Tracy. How are you? I am doing fine and dandy, Jerry. Thank you for having me. What oh, a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Perfect. And it's good. Uh, so often that well, you've interviewed me and I was telling you before we started that today I get to ask you questions. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Yes, I'm excited. So, I'm curious, Tracy, the, the last line in the bio I just read, it talks about you being passionate about helping farmers succeed in the business of farming. Can you say a little bit about that and tell the audience what, what drives that passion? Perfect. Thanks, Jerry. So that was a lovely bio. That kind of wraps up what I do. We are Farm Marketer. We are a media platform for Canadian farmers, news, weather, commodities. And most recently, within the last couple of years, is the Impact Farming Show. So I'm a farmer myself and a business person outside of farming. And I am super, super, super passionate about those two things, Jerry. You ask me what I'm passionate about, it's farming and business. And about three years ago, I seen an opportunity. I'm going to roll right into the impact farming, Jerry. Yep. Um, I seen that opportunity to bring together those two ideas that I was passionate about into a show. News Newspapers, great. TV's great. Radio's great. But a lot of farmers are on the go or like to watch video. So I was sitting there going, you know, there is so much for farmers to know, right? On the production side of business and on the business side. So I said, why don't I launch a show about what I'm passionate about and interview some of the greatest minds like you in agriculture to bring producers the ideas that will impact their farming operation. So that's what I'm passionate about is interviewing the brightest minds to bring farmers the gold nuggets that they can take back to their farming operation and dig into it and go, wow, this will work. Let's improve our operation. And, and some of the ideas that I know, I, I certainly don't have the time to watch all of your podcasts, Tracy, but the people and the experts you have on, uh, and I've noticed that in, in our farm audience, how or when I talk to farmers at farm shows, which we haven't had for the last year, but which we hopefully will get into again, but certainly the importance of being able to share that information because whether it's a farm business or whether it's in relationships or whether it's with our mental health, we learn so much from each other. And I love the storytelling aspect of that. Amen. Thanks. So what, what what is the goal of that show, Tracy? Really, exactly like I was leading up to there, is to bring the gold nuggets, Jerry, 
to talk to people like you that have great wisdom in your field of experience and different, we bring on different people, mainly in farm business. And I like to do a lot of farmer wellness, rolling into what we're going to talk about today is mental health. Because my, my take is we need to be excellent business people to run our farming operations, right? They're getting bigger and bigger and more complex. And even just doing the physical farm work, Jerry, is a full-time job. You can read about planting your crops, taking care of your animals, and still not know enough. Now you've got to navigate to the business part. I want to quickly grab those ideas from people's mind. You, Elaine, Terry, all the amazing guests I have on, plant that idea with the audience. They can take it and run from there. So that's the goal. Great gold nuggets from the brightest minds quickly in a video and podcast format for farmers. So, and and I got, again, going back to the comment I made before, um, I know you give me a call probably every six months or so, and you, you talk about the stressors that the agricultural community is feeling, and it's time to talk about it again. Um, and, and you seem to do that on a regular basis. Do you, do you, are you out there and do you detect a sense of, of farmers feeling a lot of stress and dealing with mental health uh, issues? How, what do you see in the agricultural community? Well, Jerry, first off, I'm a farmer myself, right? So when I'm looking at people to interview or places to go, I don't usually look much further than myself. And I go, okay, what's going on on the farm? What do I need to learn about? What are the biggest issues in agriculture? How is the farming season going? And then I go, uh oh, Mayday, we're in trouble, right? And that's how we end up talking. Farming's tough, as we know. And I don't like to say it this way because it comes off negative. But I guess in regular business, there's always something. In farming, it's always something. It's never. I don't know if you get a perfect year. It's either too dry, too wet, grasshoppers, whatever it is. So I tend to do a lot of business content. But here's the thing, Jerry. The first time I went to dive into mental health, I went, wait a minute. Well, that's not really what my show's about. And I go, wait a minute. I have the audience. I have the experts. I have the platform. And at the end of the day, Jerry, I truly believe that if we are not physically healthy, and even more so mentally healthy and optimistic, no amount of business knowledge will be sought out or implemented, right? If we're so busy and we're not feeling well mentally, we're not going to go looking for information to improve our farm operation, right? So that's where usually gauging what's going on in the industry, I can quickly pivot and go, oh my gosh, we're at the end of a drought. Farmers are taking off a crop that is wanting to bring many grown men and grown ladies to tears. Let's talk about mental health. Yeah. I, I really think that it's my duty. I have the platform. Somebody's got to do it, right? Yeah, exactly. And and you and I, I know the last time we talked, Tracy, we, we talked about, you, you were just mentioning uh, farmers out there wanting to improve their farms. Uh, very often when we go through a year like we did this year, um, <clears throat> farmers very often, and, and I know for myself when I was farming, very often when stress pulls us down, we 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 are it's it's very difficult to make prudent management decisions. And of course, when that happens, our farm just or our businesses just deteriorate even more. Yes, absolutely. And, and the other thing I find interesting, Tracy, I mean, we're we're talking in the news this year, of course, certainly here in Manitoba, and I know across the prairies has been um, <clears throat> the drought. I talked to someone from Calgary yesterday. He said his farming buddies around Calgary were looking at 10% of an of a average crop. I mean, that's incredibly devastating. And and we've had grasshoppers, like you mentioned, up north of Winnipeg. But it's interesting when I look in the rearview mirror and I can go back a number of years back to when I was farming even, it seemed like every year, if it wasn't one thing, it was something else, right? Yes. It, it almost gets to the point where, where, where as business people, as farmers, as, as community members, we're scared to look around the corner because we're not sure what else is going to hit us. 
Um, this year we had our regular challenge or farmers had their regular challenges and to top it all off, we had the pandemic, which changed everything. And you and I have talked about the frustration that brought on and it brought on for you as a business owner. Absolutely. You know, it is, <laughs> you're right. It, it, it's always something. And I guess that's what makes us tough, right, Jerry, as farmers in the egg business world, flipping now to my role in farm marketer and the impact farming show and all the other egg businesses that are out there trying to do business and reach farmers. Well, you know what? They just went from trusty old showing up on the farm, making a sales call, going to farm shows, going to conferences to zilch, nothing. And I mean, it, it's two sides of the coin, right? All us people in the egg industry world that like to go to those shows to meet with our clients and our peers. And then the same thing on the farmer end. The farmers enjoy that as our time to get off the farm, right? So we're all experiencing that, but we know the farmers are experiencing it for this reason. But I think like you were saying, Jerry, sometimes the challenges of the sales professionals, those get forgotten a little bit here. They have had to learn new ways to talk to farmers, learn new ways to get their product in front. And not only that is <laughs> deal with the challenges themselves, right? Let's say if you're a chemical rep or a feed sales guy or gal, um, you're going through this as well as a person with your family. And now you have a client list of farmers that you need to call on. Well, goodness gracious, the whole world just ground to halt. They don't want you on the farm. But you know what? As a salesperson, a rep, whatever we want to call ourselves, that's our job to get in front to make sure those farmers don't forget about us, that they continue to order product so that you can keep your job and keep your company happy because yeah. all of the wheels all of the cogs in the wheel, I think that's a saying, it has to keep on going. But you know what? The farmers got their product. We all figured it out. But that rep is dealing with a lot of unknown in the middle too. And not only that, flipping back to the mental health aspect, here we are, end of September. And like we just said, all these farmers are taking off crops that are, for the most part, terrible. Many beef producers have had to sell out because their grass is um, tear worthy. I have seen many, many crispy pastures. So now flip it back to that sales rep. They're not only navigating as themselves, their family, their job. As we've discussed in a previous episode, Jerry, you know that that sales rep, feed rep, that professional that works one on one with farmers it's often said that they become the dumping ground for yeah. a lot of stress because guess what? As farmers, some of us get out more than others based on personality, location, whatever it may be, time, availability, community involvement. But here's the thing. Often those sales professionals are that trusted, unbiased, third party that's not family that end up becoming that shoulder for the farmer where if it's a guy or a gal, will be equal opportunity here. They don't want to lay that stress on their spouse or their kids. They don't want to vent. So the feed sales rep comes. <laughs> they, they honestly, if they are showing up now or calling or emailing, whatever the case may be, they don't know what they're walking into, right? Yeah. Yep, totally. You, you, <laughs> Tracy, you took the words right out of my mouth, basically, because I was going to go there. Because I've had numerous conversations over the last few years about service providers and, and how I often ta tell them that really they're frontline staff, aren't they? Yeah. They're on the front lines. And just like you say, and again, from personal experience, I know when I was facing financial difficulties on the farm, it was the feed salesman that I would vent to because I wanted to try and save my wife and my kids from what I was experiencing. So yeah. there's that piece. But the other piece also, because we talk about agriculture as being a community which involves the farmers, it involves the community that they live in, it involves the business part of it. 
And, and one of the problems is that very often when farmers are facing challenges, it requires some very difficult conversations between a farmer and a service provider because maybe a bill can't be paid or a contract. I see a lot on social media now about contracts, not, you know, you can't fill them. Yeah. And, and the ramifications of that are, is huge. So that happens during the day. And then in the evening, your kids are playing hockey and you go to the arena and guess what? Their kids are playing hockey too. And now you have to sit in the bleachers and, and be parents rooting for the same team, right? And, and so it creates, it creates a huge issue in the entire community. Absolutely. You know, small communities are, let's put it this way, small communities are fantastic for so many reasons, but I've heard that over and over, Jerry, when things aren't going great and there's tough times, it makes it tough all around because then small communities can really feel like there's no boundaries. It's just very claustrophobic, right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, and I appreciate you, you telling us that, Tracy. But let's get a little more personal now. Oh, dear. Are you okay with that? <laughs> well, let's see. What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's talk about your own mental health journey. And, and I'm not saying it's good or it's bad. I'm, I'm asking you, how has your mental health journey been as someone who lives in a rural community, as someone who farms, and as someone who hears the, you know a lot of heart breaking stories from across Canada or even in North America, you hear these stories, you go back to the farm, you're farming yourself, and you're also part of that business community and also the, the local community. Oh boy, Jerry, loaded question, loaded question. I'm debating where I want to go with this. <laughs> my mental health journey, there was a few, a, a few <clears throat> thoughts flickering through my mind on where I want to go with that. Let's just take the pandemic. And I want to be real, which I pride myself on always being. But I really want to rip the Band-Aid off a little bit, if you're okay with that. Yeah. Because sometimes, even with my show, I like to have the hard conversations to bear a little bit of the burden, throw myself under the bus, and make it okay for others. And if you want to judge me and laugh at me, go ahead. I can't see you or hear you, so it doesn't matter. No, uh, jokes aside, you know, I think, Jerry, there's a lot of people putting on a brave face the last year and this year. We've had, you look at, let's touch on the farm part here, okay? Let's look at this year. We have had such a terrible year for drought, the most parts. I mean, there's people probably watching from everywhere, but a lot of drought consistent across many locations. And what the drought didn't finish, the grasshoppers had a feast on, right? And that's probably on the back of a few dry years, right? So there was going to be some unhappiness and challenges financially, I would imagine, from years before for many, many big grain operations and even cattle operations. The hay supplies have been dwindling. We've been having to buy. That eats at that bottom line, right? Yeah. So now you come to a year like this, it's devastating. Okay? So we have this. We have the farming crisis going on. It's not hard. There's people in very bad positions. Um they're trying to work on that. Now, I'll flip over to the pandemic side myself. And I always like to use what's going on with me and in my world right now. Fortunately, we got very lucky and we have hay now on our on our operation. It was touch and go a few times. We got the right rain. But I can just imagine what many of these producers are going through. I feel it. It's real. I walk around, drive around, hear, listen, talk to farmers. I feel it. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So that's our farming world. And that's a big, big, big weight to bear as a farmer and a farm family. The best of times. Now, here's where I'm going to be a little rip the band-aid off. This pandemic is absolutely, absolutely unlike anything we've ever seen. 
I find maybe there's not enough people talking about it. And you know what? It's scary. Who wants to talk about their feelings? Who wants to say, oh, I don't like this. I'm struggling, right? Because that's a yucky feeling. It is, honestly, right? But we have never experienced anything like this, Jerry. So on top of everything that farmers are dealing with, we're now dealing with an uncertainty at a human level, human existence that we've never, ever had. Maybe, again, maybe I'm experiencing this a little bit different, but I would venture to guess, no. I'm one of the most optimistic, motivated people I know. And man, this has just knocked the wind out of me a few times, yeah. right? Yeah. Her whole existence, we don't know what up, what is up or down anymore. I mean, between masks and all kinds of, I won't go into majority of that, but closures, dealing with the farm. And now there is tension in our families, in our friend group, because of this pandemic, in our community. The people that we would go to as farmers to get out and celebrate and go curling or go to socials, whatever you may do, that is not there. Or for various reasons, Jerry, it's fractured, right? It's changed. It's changed. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, can I just finish one one last thought, Jerry? Yeah. What I find too is it's great if you know when the end is in sight. Yes. Something to look forward to. I always say, here, here's my recipe for happiness I found. And I go back to this time and time again. If I go, something's off. To lead, to lead a happy life, you need three things. Something to do, so your job, community, all that kind of stuff. Somebody to love, whether that's your spouse, your children, friends, family, dog, cat, chicken, I don't care. Somebody to love, to give affection to. And then something to look forward to. Yes. So as humans, due to farming and the pandemic, our something to do has been affected, or someone to love has been affected and now or something to look forward to is very unknown and i think i'm going to speak for myself right here for somebody that's enjoyed a very fortunate x many years on this planet with certainty and opportunity having that rug pulled out from under you is tough again well and I'm going to say this because all the time people go, oh, first world problems. You're healthy, you eat, da, da, da. But you know what? I don't like the first world shaming. We live our lives. We know what we know. And then when we can't live that same life that we're used to, no matter what it is, it, it's like an, uh, a punch in the gut, right? Yeah. You don't know what to look forward to. And when's it going to end? So that's my take. That's well, why I'm pulling off the Band-Aid. I think there's a lot of people struggling and nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah. And 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 again, yeah, I think I think we're you're reading my mind because I was just gonna talk about the fact that that I remember when the <clears throat> oh, excuse me, when the pandemic hit in March of last year, you know, okay, now we have to stay home. And it was a little bit of excitement, right? This is something different. I can watch Netflix without feeling guilty and I you know. Yeah. And it's all uh, yeah, in a month, maybe two at the most three, we're going to be back to normal and woohoo, life will go on, right? Well, here we are a year and a half later, and we still don't know that the end still isn't in sight. In fact, for the most part, we're going into a fourth wave somewhere in Canada, and maybe even in Manitoba at some point. So, so it becomes, uh, and I think generally speaking, when 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 we struggle with with stuff, whether it's our farm, our business, our relationships, our mental health, if we know there's an end in sight, it's much easier to work our way through it. Yes. But when that end keeps moving and it's a moving target, it, it just it dra it drags us down even more. Absolutely. So I appreciate you saying that, and I, I I want to make sure I got those three points you made because they're really good. You need something to do, someone to love, and yeah. something to look forward to. I think that's an awesome message for our audience, Tracy. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's my little, my when I learn that, I go to it. If I feel off, even if it's work, if I'm like, wait a minute, well, somebody to love, something to look forward to. Okay. Do I need to spice it up with work? Do I need to learn something new? It doesn't have to be big things. 
even something to look forward to buying a book or going for a walk. It doesn't have to be a trip. It's just a point. Exactly. To get you to the next thing, right? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> maybe even jump to any final thoughts you have. I know, Tracy, we shared a story, and I think it's an important story for our audience to hear uh, regarding the conversation you had with your husband. Mm. Okay, going back there, Jerry, I'm glad you brought that up. To me, I got to say one thing here quickly, and I'll try and make it quick. To me, mental health is no different than physical health. We are all one operating system. And I love that you guys are doing this work. So thank you. And thank you for giving me that opportunity to chat. I think the stigma shouldn't even be a thing. It should be my physical health, my mental health. How am I doing? We all have health. If you're feeling sad one day, your mental health has slid downwards. Then there's mental illness. That's different, right? <clears throat> so I think this work is important. And, you know, I think often if we don't talk about those sad feelings, the disappointments, and we keep that bottled up, to me, I feel it's like a volcano. It brews on the inside and it's not healthy on our physical health and it's not he healthy for our minds. And we got to get that out there. And moving to that story, Jerry, with the pandemic and with what is going on in the farming industry, I have a very big concern for our mental health as farmers and as humans on this planet. Honestly, I think there is a bigger suicide crisis going on than is even put out there by the media due to lack of hope and fear and all of those things. But within our industry to bring it in here is we really need to be on the lookout learning one about our mental health and keeping an eye on the people in our family and in our community because you know what even if a person looks amazingly normal you don't know what's going on in their minds you really don't and to bring it home on one just one story i've heard Fortunately, I've heard of too many farmers that are on suicide watch right now. Uh, we heard through a friend of ours, a farmer way out west, that is on suicide watch. And guess what? They're working cattle to sell the cattle because they have no grass and no feed. His whole livelihood, all his animals that he's proud of, are going and guess what he's sitting in the car watching those animals be sorted to sell i can feel that right here i can feel that and you know i think that's just one of many stories right now yeah. and it's terribly sad and most importantly as farmers and business people we're passionate about what we do we invest ourselves into what we do we take on that title of farmer or media person and it becomes our identity but i yeah. think it's super important that we separate that because when things go back bad like in farming you know it's not our fault as farmers mother nature just dealt you a bad hand it's gambling at the highest stakes so if you get a bad hand it's not you as a farmer that failed it is the farming conditions and what breaks my heart is that there's farmers that are hurting and they're so wrapped up in the identity of these bad times that they bring it all on themselves and their mental health is suffering and some just feel that they're not worth anything anymore and they want to take a very permanent action yeah. so what i had said to anthony when i heard that story i think we were driving when he told me that and I just looked at him and I said, you know, I love the farm, Anthony. And he said, yes. And I said, you know, if anything bad happened and this farm had to go, I wouldn't care, right? I would live in a hole <laughs> with you. I do not care about this farm. It's lovely. We like it, but it's cattle, it's buildings, it's dirt. At the end of the day, you are all I care about. That's very personal, yeah. but I hope everybody in the audience, to me, I would just encourage, 
we're fortunately very fine this year. We got lucky. We got a good hand from Mother Nature. We're lucky. I would like to encourage others just to keep an eye out with their farmer or them as a farmer. If that's you, no, it's not your identity. <clears throat> it's just animals and dirt. That yeah. can be replaced, right? Yeah. And, and I, we could go on talking about some of this, but I, we're out of time. So, Tracy, I really appreciate what you've shared. I appreciate showing some vulnerability there. Uh, there's a lot of human our human lives are intertwined with the community we live in, with the businesses we have, with the farms we have. And so I'm going to just to make proof to you that I was listening is those three points you made. We need something to do. We need someone to love and we need something to look forward to. I, th I think that's a really awesome, cool message that you gave our viewers. So Tracy, just to kind of wrap this up, can you just let our stigma free audience know where to find impact farming and the other work you do? Perfect. So our main media platform, farmmarketer.com, all kinds of news and information there. Impact farming episodes are housed on the uh, the Farm Marketer website. So www.farmmarketer.com. And if you want to connect with me anywhere on social media, I am Tracy M. Brunette on all platforms, I do believe. So all right. Perfect. Thank you very much, Tracy, for taking the time to join us today. Um, I would just like to let the viewers know that that they can, they can find a lot of resources um, for what we've talked about and for other stories they've heard at ruralmentalwellness.com. And I would just like to leave the viewers with this message. Actually, I heard this from David Richardson, who's a co-founder and chair of Stigma Free Society, when he says, it's okay to have challenges, it's okay to be different, and it's okay to need help. And what I leave viewers with is my simple message is that there's hope and there's relief. And we again appreciate, Tracy, the message you left for us. So thanks, everybody, and stay well. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye-bye.